Unickel was 43 years old, a theater teacher in a Manhattan high school. He was the man who believed in aleatoric miracles and hated the cold touch of reality. They rehearsed their shows in the mornings from 7 to 9. Mr. Nickel was followed by demons to our hopeful practice of that chilled October morning of 1993. He thought he walked alone, but was mistaken. Mr. Nickel frowned at the long string of homeless people on the cold morning sidewalk. Their faces stained with disappointment and hopelessness haunted Mr. Nickel. Soon, Mr. Nickel entered the school theater and clapped his hands at the class. All right, thespians, are we ready for tonight's Halloween? The class answered with their anxious echolalia. The demons now crawled in closer to their poor and suspected Mr. Nickel. Rehearsal began. They loosely applied their costumes and ran through their lines. Now Mr. Nickel sat in the audience, holding the scripts, ready to follow with the students when he began to feel watched. Straightened his back, now more alert. The demons laughed quietly at Mr. Nickel's reaction. It should have been you. And said, referring to tragedies, Mr. Nickel whipped his head back, looking for the source of the voice. Some students looked with curiosity, but defeated, Mr. Nickel turned his attention back to the class. I must be hearing things, he assured himself. But then he realized something was wrong with the actors. The demons got to the students before he could. Today's not a nice one, Mr. Nickel. Why don't you leave this place? Surprised, Mr. Nichols stood up. Hey. He sat himself back down and rubbed his eyes. Rehearsal continued, but demons don't follow the path of good. The students, <gasps> their faces were wrong. <laughs> Mr. Nichols' skin became a diaphanous shade of white. Their faces only got more disturbing. He decided on his own the demons were the manifestation of every flaw in the world. They must die. The demons got closer, possessing the frangible bodies of students. Mr. Nickel sprinted to the prop room, picking up the sharpest blade made of plastic. One by one, he slayed each student until the voices stopped. Still in shock from the chaos, Mr. Nickel stood on the stage, his heart on verge of collapsing. The reality could not be brushed away any longer. There was no Halloween play that night. Instead, it was a crime scene. Yellow tape blocked the entry, and detectives were left out of words. I was still new to my job, but old enough to understand. We restrained Mr. Nickel and trapped his limbs to a cold leather gurney. He looked like an average American man. I've probably seen him on the streets and thought nothing different. We made eye contact. His eyes screamed at me, but his lips smiled. He laughed loudly. I followed the procedure, injecting the muscle relaxants, but demons don't relax. I noticed his eyes were the lightest shade of blue I had ever seen. How creepy, I thought. You've got the wrong guy, he said. You don't want me in the care of the vulnerable. Please remain silent, I told him. I've done this before, but this time I was truly horrified. Mr. Nickel never killed eight students. He wouldn't hurt a fly. The demons did. The media compared him to Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, and even Richard Ramirez, but I knew better. I learned better after our conversation that morning. Mr. Nickel had dark brown eyes. The devil will drain color from your soul. He died under odd circumstances, four years later in prison. But we are still here.